Hi folks. I've been using this uh, Mead LX70 R5, show you the name there, refractor, 120 millimeter refractor for uh, three months um, in about five days. And I thought I'd come out here and tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. You can see the optical tube assembly here. Back here, the finder scope, eyepiece, area diagonal, uh, the mount. 11.4 pound counterweight. There's the tripod. Um, this is a fairly large refractor. I consider it more of, a, I suppose, a medium size refractor. Um, it weighs about 47 and a half pounds, fully assembled. Um, that would be a hassle if I had to carry it out with my back. But uh, the thing is, it uh, disassembles so easily. I won't do it right here because I, I would need probably need some help. Um, with the camera but it's got these little bolts and this is standard on all these refractors they come loose and you take back the bracket and then do the top one and it lifts right off it's literally a 15 second operation uh, to take this uh, optical tube off um, and put it back on and then over here the weight it's got a tiny little uh, toe saver screw you just unscrew that it takes about three seconds turn this knob here and the weight slides off. So that's about a seven or eight second operation. And then you have three pieces, all easy to, um, the tube's 11 pounds, the weight's a little over 11 pounds, and maybe 24 pounds uh, for the mount and uh, tripod. And uh, that might not add up to 47 and a half, but by the time you add the weight of the fighter scope and everything else, I suppose it's that 45 to 47 and a half pounds. Um, what's good about it and what's bad? We'll start with the bad. These, uh, slow motion cables, control cables. This one here, you can see it's kind of hard to get at way in there um, to tighten it. it. Tends to come loose. This one here should be two or three times longer. It should come way back to here. And so um, they're not the greatest. They work, they work, but um, they were sloppily, sloppily done in my opinion. Um, I'm trying to think if there's something else that I didn't like about the scope. Um, I think that's about it. I was complaining about the about the control cables all the time. Everything else just really seems to work. The uh, I suppose the rack and pinion focuser. It's a tiny bit on the stiff side as I kept using it. Um, it's got that heavy grease factory grease on it. I can um, unscrew the bottom here and take this off and. Uh, Spray it with WD-40 and put on some white lithium grease, and it's going to be way... It still focuses real nice. No problem with it, turning it in and out, but it's going to be a lot smoother when I do that. Other than that, it's been great. Um, you can see with the scope, right in these fairly light polluted skies, Bortle 5 to 6, um, I've been able to see the ring nebula with no trouble. I've been able to see a uh, boatload of glob globular clusters. Turn, I've turned into a glob hunter. Um, um, a lot of detail on, on the planets, on Sab seen Saturn's Cassini division, with no trouble when the scene's good. Um, a lot of detail on Jupiter. Um, it's a solid deal. It's got a little level right there on the tripod. It's really solid. I've been out in one night of heavy winds, and it didn't move my, barely move my scope at all. You'd have a tiny bit of wind shake here and there when the gusts would hit the scope. Otherwise... Um, a guy just stopped to ask about my scope. It draws a lot of attention. Um, little dirt right here, that's rubber. Rubber, you can barely see it on there. I can take that off with of goo gone. It's from the rubber pads on the brackets. Um, when I got the scope, I thought these eyepieces were gonna be worthless. You can see I have a little rubber band on this one. They had no rubber on the side, no eye cups. That's the nine millimeter. The rubber band just is easier to hold it. There's the 26 millimeter right here. It turned out to be beautiful. Really clear their plossels, really nice quality lenses. And uh, um, here's a, the scope does, they're one and a quarter inch eyepieces. It's got an adapter for them, because it does take two inch eyepieces. Here's a Gary Russell, 32 millimeter wide film plossel. This is a really, really nice eyepiece uh, for scanning the sky. Nice sky scanner. Um, I have a few other eyepieces, but uh, the two that came with the scope, if you add a, bar, a 2X Barlow, um, and a moon filter, they do the trick. The moon, the craters show just beautiful, beautiful detail on a nice dark, especially when you're like 50, 60% illuminated. It's like you could slide down the craters. So that's nice. Um, 
tracking's like I said, the tracking's pretty good. I don't even, um, it, you, it does have a, a polar alignment scope through here, right through the uh, mount, but I don't use it. I just uh, have it set for our uh, latitude here, uh, 43.666, and it's right on. I'll, for the, for, I, you know, I don't use, use the scope for imaging. My brother does. He's been trying to take pictures. Um, as far as uh, just as far as use, um, it can be hard on your back with these equatorial mounts. So I recommend you buy a a um, viewing chair, a astronomical chair. They're about 120 bucks. Buy one of those before you buy anything else, because all the stuff that comes with this refractor is pretty good quality. This diagonal, I was thinking of replacing this diagonal with something better, so I could, you know, just get a better view, and if I needed to. And, but every time I looked in it, I couldn't believe how bright and nice it was. And then I finally found out it's a very meticulously polished diagonal. If you can see in there, see if I can take it off. Um, beautifully polished, and it uh, um, it's 80 bucks. So show it this guy. Really nice shine to it. Beautifully polished. So there's no sense in replacing the diagonal. Hi folks, how's it going? Hey, doing a video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, really a nice, nice diagonal. Um, if I was to spend 120 on the on Mead's blue diagonal, it would look a lot nicer than this. Give the scope even fancier look than it has. But I wouldn't be getting. I'd be getting more toughness with the dielectric coatings, but I wouldn't be uh, seeing anything better than I see with this. This is really nice. Um, like I said, the ring nebula is kind of small, um, light polluted skies, and I can pick it up. In this, you know, the other day I found it in 20 seconds, and uh, pick it right up. So, so there you have it. This is the Mead LX70 R5 High Point Scientific. Uh, bought out the, the remaining stock. It's a $700 scope, and they've been selling it for uh, 540. So, um, if you're looking for a nice refractor that can cut through city lights, uh, this is it. This, I mean, it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg. Um, an acromat like this is the way to go. Oh, false color. Very little. What little I've found has been um, yellow. Kind of a thin yellow line sometimes on the moon or something really bright. And so you don't want to use a yellow number 8 or something to get rid of traumatic aberration because it will actually enhance that yellow. But uh, most of the time you can't see it. Right? Most of the time you can't see the yellow. And rarely, not once or twice have I seen uh, uh, the purple fringing on anything. For the most part, it's uh, it's uh, got real nice uh, uh, color. Um, so I guess that'll do it for now before I run this uh, video up too long. And uh, keep tuning in. I'll tell you, this has been, like I said, this is going on three months of use. Um, if I add anything to it or if I um, uh, have any more comments, I'll do another video. See you later.